Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into Midgard Musings today and watching today's video. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel, as you may or may not already know. If this is your first time, I appreciate your support. For everybody else who's already supported Midgard Musings through your views, comments, likes, and subscriptions, thank you very much. I want to call to attention the fact that I am actively and aggressively seeking 2,000 subscribers by or before January 1st, 2020. All right, that means that we need to get at least three new subscribers every day until then, and your help is greatly appreciated. I couldn't do this, well, I could do this if it wasn't for each and every one of you, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun because I would just be talking to nobody. All right, so everybody's participation and involvement on this channel is greatly appreciated. I invite you to please write down here, see it, right down there, please click that subscribe button you don't want to miss any videos here on this channel be sure to click the bell notifications because then you will get notified every time that I upload new content all right guys I appreciate everybody's uh, everybody's support and I look forward to learning new things with each and every one of you about Norse heathenry Germanic paganism all that kind of fun stuff so please become a subscriber today that button is right down here it costs you literally nothing to become a subscriber and then if you want to be notified just click the bell for notifications it's all right if you don't but it is appreciated if you do check the description down below for all the other ways that you can support Midgard Musings through Facebook Patreon Teespring Redbubble uh, anything else that you see down there click on the links follow them see if it's something that fits you I appreciate all your support let's jump in to today's video hail and thank you all <music> everybody hail and welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings thanks so much for joining me today um, today is going to be a continuation of the deity discussion series I believe we're at episode 12 now just double check that down in the title of the video but I believe we're at episode 12 and um, we're, today we're going to be discussing a, uh, a god in the mythology who's kind of a bit mysterious like there's not there's there's enough information about him to know that he was obviously a part of the, the the Norse pantheon but we don't have a whole lot of information about him in terms of his characteristics um, you know how he may have been venerated by uh, the Scandinavian people and that is the god Ullr all right I thought this would be a really timely uh, episode great timing uh, given that in this time of year in at least my part of the world uh, we're getting into the winter months, we're getting into the colder seasons, we're getting into a lot of outdoor activities such as hunting, you know, uh, skiing for those in like the really extreme northern uh, winter climates where there's mountains and snow. Um, and Ullr is a god that is very closely associated with those things and some other things as well. He's uh, associated with things like hunting, archery specifically. Um, survival, the outdoors, sports in general, um, also has some uh, connections with things of single combat and duels, okay? Uh, so for the reasons that I mentioned earlier, you know that we're in like the hunting seasons, um, a lot of modern heathens may want to, hey, uh, give honor to Ullr during their hunt and things like that. I thought it would be a great time to talk a bit about him, uh, at least from what we know. And then get some of your uh, feedback on him and, and in your pagan practices, how he's incorporated or introduced into your activities as a pagan. So, uh, Ullr's name uh, can mean that of glory. Uh, I've seen some other things as well talking about him being like, a, or the name of like a servant, uh, a servant of glory. Um, but he's. His, uh, he ranges, he, he kind of ranges through, uh, in, in the mythology, anyway, we're going to talk a little about the mythology aspect of, you know, what we hear about in the poems and then some of the sagas or whatever, uh, but he, he ranges through this forested realm, uh, in the mythology, um, whenever he's not watching, uh, or sort of filling in as a ruler, um, and his realm is called Edalir, and it means the yew dales, yew meaning the yew tree, um, 
and that is his hall. It's, it's attested to in um, one of the poems in the Poetic Ed, uh, poetic ed I believe it's in Green the Small. Um, but anyways, his hall being the yew dales, um, the yew tree being something that was uh, very sacred and used quite often to make uh, bows uh, with. So it makes sense that his hall or his realm uh, is that of the yew trees, okay? So again, he is often considered a god to uh, kind of preside over things relating to archers, archery. Um, quite often maybe have been one of protection for those that are out in the wild, you know, the hunters, um, maybe even nowadays like the park rangers, uh, people like that, things that, you know, have to do with a lot of the outdoor uh, activities. Um, among his attributes, okay, of uh, being a god of associated with the hunt, uh, sports, competition, um, he is also said to be very attractive. He has a very handsome appeal to him, I guess. Um, and he's kind of a rotating ruler deity, all right, if you will, a chieftain who kind of takes turns. Um, he's ruled over the Aesir. Whenever uh, Odin goes wandering, and he has also uh, had his part in in watching over and ruling over uh, the Vanir tribe of the gods during kind of the early stages of the war that took place between the Aesir and uh, the Vanir. Um, he is. It, it's said that he has an oath ring. We're going to talk a little about that uh, later on uh, as we go along through the video. But it's said that his oath ring uh, could shrink and sever the limbs or fingers of those. Who went back on their oath. So he has some uh, associations amongst the things that we already talked about. He also has things p potentially uh, associating him with uh, keeping of oaths, okay, and not going back on your oaths. Um, I read somewhere too that it's possible that Uller has, uh, he, he it may be another interpretation of Odin, uh, because like Odin, Uller will be a leader of the wild hunt. Um, this time of year, uh, for, for a lot of pagans, this time of year will be a time where we are uh, focusing on that aspect of, uh, of the mythology because kind of like around the date of the first frost or you know, sometime we're, we're in the beginning of November now, so sometime, sometime between the end of October and the beginning of November uh, in this northern hemisphere anyways, um, you know, we, we're kind of thinking about it and looking at the, the stories of the wild hunt. Let me just move that, if I can, a little bit. That <laughs> incense keeps getting me. So, um, now to get into a bit of his his background. Um, Ullur is uh, Sif's son, Thor's wife, but he is not Thor's son. He is kind of like a stepson uh, figure to Thor, you know? Now, I could just imagine if it were modern times and, you know, Uller, you're not my real dad, go away or something, you know, let the memes run wild on that one. But um, <laughs> the Kennings that kind of uh, established that uh, Uller is an exceptional archer and good on skis and, and good in, you know, like the winter uh, sports and winter activities, um, skates even, you know, um, some of the Kennings uh, that, uh, or at least one canning that we know of, uh, for Uller's uh, name is, is he's god of, uh, uh, of the shield. Um, in fact, Uller's ship is a canning for a shield, all right, which can indicate possibly that there was a, uh, I believe it, it, it said that there was a tale of, of him traveling across the ocean on a shield, but, um, if that exists, the tale, uh, kind of has been lost, so, um, again, we've got his hall, Idalr, in, uh, Gr in Grimismal, in the poem Grimismal, in the Poetic Era, um, that talks about where his realm is, where his hall is. Um, and then we also see elsewhere in uh, Grimismal, um, kind of uh, th this point of Odin being uh, trapped or coming out of trance. Um, and he promises the blessings uh, for anyone who can free him from these fires that kind of are entrapping him uh, in this story. And, 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 and Uden promises the blessings of Ullr and all the gods on whoever can 
and rescue him or free him from this. So the placement uh, of Uller's name in the poem and his importance suggests that <clears throat> he has a position of particular prominence, okay, for him to, uh, to be, you know, for, for his blessing specifically to be promised if, if Odin is freed. Now, this suggestion is uh, corroborated in another source of, um, of, of, of information that we have. It's a little bit different, um, but it's from Saxo Grammaticus. I've talked a little bit about him in some of my other videos. Um, he was a medieval Danish historian, and he kind of refers to the gods of lore as actual people, you know? So, but in, uh, in Saxo Grammaticus's um, uh, I can't remember the name of it right now, but if I find, if I figure it out, it will, I'll, I'll put it up here on the screen. It's a Latin name, and I can't remember it off the top of my head. But in this portion of, of, of his writings, uh, he says that that um, Uller, whose name is now uh, Latinized as um, uh, Alerus, um, he assumes leadership of the gods uh, during a period when uh, Odin, who was their usual usual chieftain. Uh, he was in exile for, for doing something quite awful after his son Baldurus's death. So um, we also see in another Old Norse poem, uh, the poem is called Akavida. Uh, it features a scene of uh, involving the swearing of oaths, um, wherein the last and most solemn oath is sworn on the ring of Uller. Okay, now we have some archaeological and historical evidence that suggests a very prominent and important uh, role that uh, the Scandinavians at the time had towards, uh, you know, pos uh, positioning ruler very highly, um, because in uh, it's it's north of Stockholm and it's in uh, Lilla Ulevi, and if I'm mispronouncing that to all the Swedes out there, I apologize. Um, but there's an actual there was an actual shrine to Uller. Uh, that was unearthed and discovered, and in the earth around it, there were something like 65 rings. Um, and so the references of swearing on Uller's ring um, indicates that he could have definitely been one of the gods who uh, watched over and sort of presided over the taking of, of oaths. Um, we've, we still carry on this, this practice nowadays for many heathens uh, of having an oath ring to swear oaths on. Um, so apparently at this site north of Stockholm uh, the rings were used for the swearing of oaths and then uh, buried there um, at his shrine. So again we do have historical and archaeological evidence that suggests that Uller was a prominent god um, in Scandinavian culture. So we also see that in uh, names places or, 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 or place names. There's a prevalence of things being derived from Uller throughout Sweden and Eastern Norway um, and that, that further attests to you know Uller having been an, an exceptionally prominent figure um, amongst medieval Scandinavia and, and possibly before so you know many of the names that we see that exist, uh, the names of the gods that exist in these place names uh, are combined with elements such as like a hof or a temple um, and and so we see that there's active worship or active veneration of Uller at least during the early Viking Age and you know possibly later on as well we just don't know in the end you know the level at which or, or the ways at which he was honored or venerated but we see through archaeological and historical sources that he had an important role um, and again we don't we don't we can't even really say for sure I think Snorri maybe labels him as a, one of the Aesir gods um, but for sure you know whether he was dedicated solely to the Aesir tribe or whether he was Vanir or whether he kind of like floated between the two uh, depending on where he was needed you know like I said as being the uh, kind of like a an interim uh, ruler when one or more of the the, the regular rulers of the gods were out of place for whatever reason. Uh, we just really have no idea who he really was or what made him so important uh, to ancient Scandinavians. We just don't know. We, we see that he was, but we don't necessarily know why. So there's a bit of mystery and a bit of, you know, 
uncertainty about why Uluru was so important, but he was. So that kind of goes into now into modern times. You know, we have a lot of folks uh, that I talk to at least who feel that Uluru is an important part for them to incorporate into their pagan practices. And I'm curious um, if anybody that watches this video specifically is, you know, why is Uluru so important to you? Um, I've heard of him often being hailed or, or, or called upon uh, in modern times to kind of bring luck or victory during their hunt, um, maybe even games of skill, uh, because one of the things that we you know, read about uh, is that Uller was, was so great at what he was doing that you know, no one could compete against him. So that, that level of uh, sportsmanship, that, that, that heightened level of competition is definitely something that seems to be surrounding Uller, you know, so that could possibly be something that we can glean from or take from the sources and be like, yeah, that's why some folks nowadays may feel so inclined to call on him or hail him in their uh, own practices or ritual when it comes to things of when skill is involved or, or especially for the hunt or, you know, that sort of thing. So I uh, personally have not worked with Uller in my own practices, uh, but that's not to say that there's plenty of people out here watching who do and have and have experienced his presence and, and call upon him and, and have maybe received luck uh, for, for offering to him for the hunt or things of that nature. So I'm definitely anxious and curious to hear about your involvement and in, in your inclusion of Uller in your pr practices. I would be very interested to hear about that and I'm sure everybody else that's watching would certainly be so uh, interested in as well. So there you go guys. That is kind of a breakdown of Uller. We're definitely in the time of year um, where a lot of folks are either already in the hunting season or starting to get into the hunting season. I think for many states uh, in the country, we've already had a few weeks of uh, archery season, bow season. You know, so given the fact that Uller is, you know, so closely associated with the bow and, for, and archers and things, and that could definitely be a time of year. Whereas if you engage in that sort of hunt, uh, then you could, you know, work Uller into uh, your hunt and, you know, whatever that may be, whether you, you know, leave an offering for him or whether you offer some of the hunt to him as, 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 as thanks in the gifting process, whatever that may be, that would be a really neat thing to hear about uh, from all the, the viewers and everybody that's, that's watching this. So please head down into the comment section and leave your feedback below. I'd definitely be interested in hearing this. We are very, very close to hitting that 2,000 subscribers. You know, you guys have heard me talk about it now for quite some time. The intro to every video is us pushing for that 2,000 subscribers. As of today, we're like 70 subscribers away. I think last week it was 111. So we're getting there very quickly. So hopefully, uh, if not by next week's video, then before the end of the month, we should definitely be there. And I definitely want to say thank you to all the supporters, everybody that's subscribing, Clicking that like button, commenting down below, it helps get the videos, you know, distributed out there for the YouTube algorithms to realize that it needs to be kind of distributed out there. So thank you all so much for continuing to support the channel. It means a lot. Thank you to all the Patreon uh, supporters who have uh, been active on there. It means a lot. Head down into the description. You'll see a link on all the ways that you can support uh, Midgard Musings. It's, it's a link tree link, so all you have to do is click on it and it'll redirect you. It'll show you every single way that you can uh, help support the channel. So thank you all again so much for watching. I have a very very fun uh, Kind of collaborative video plan for next week a friend of mine is hopefully going to be present with me for that and um, It's gonna be different. It's gonna be a little bit different um, But hopefully we'll bring some other stuff to the table um, That for us to think about it's you know my interaction with this friend of mine who's hopefully gonna be here next week will uh, ha has helped me um, We've helped each other and hopefully it will shed some light and help others that are watching as well. So thank you all again for watching today's video. Hail, and I'll see you in next week's video.